Hello, good morning. Welcome to the Trey Holds Radio Show. Thank you for joining us this morning. Today, my special guest is Mr. Chuck Davidson. Thank you, and join us in a minute. Okay, my first question to you is, what inspired you to write your book? What What was the thought process for Tim, for the book? Well, it's kind of a, a strange uh, conclusion to write this book. It started commuting on the Metro North Railroad to Manhattan, mm-hmm. which I did every day, it seems, forever. And uh, I'd always have the New York Times to pass the time while I'm commuting. And I opened it one day, you know, the layers and layers of newsprint, and I came to an ad for temporary office help. Mm-hmm. It only said temp office help because the other six letters were covered up by a cockroach that was pressed into the neck of the newsprint. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was like looking at a flower in a coveted diary that's been preserved. And I'm looking at this bug and I'm thinking about the times, just layers like sedimentary rock that a paleontologist would split to find fossils inside. And then I realized I'd done just that. The cockroach has been around for over 300 million years. Oh, wow. And, and I'm realizing I'm like a paleontologist. I open up sedimentary layers. They give a sense of history and time. And I come to this bug. I'm thinking about it. And thinking about, why don't I write something about this book? This is pretty fascinating. And uh, that's how I started. And when I started, it was a pad of paper I had in my briefcase. And I started writing a story. And I had read a lot of Michener books on that train, which uh, began, as Michener does, at the beginning of time and takes you to thousands of pages into the, the moment. Mm-hmm. And I, I started writing the book from the beginning of time, which was the Big Bang and the fact that everything kind of grew out of this event. And you, journal, you journey through time and space and eventually uh, through the stories of a unique meteor that's created that's highly magnetic. Uh, it takes you to a point in time 320 million years ago when Tem comes on the scene. Tem, the first three letters in temporary office help, became the name of the creature. And uh, so you, you come to this bug and he's in the water and he's coming out to be a land animal. And that became kind of the second stage of this timeline. Timeline starting with the Big Bang, eventually introducing Tim, and eventually introducing humanity. And I realized that this timeline could go as long as I wanted to take it. So I started writing like an improvisational story, a stream of consciousness, and it ended up 900 handwritten pages in spiral pointers, <laughs> commuting about 65,000 miles, I estimate, on the New York Hudson Line Railroad to Manhattan. And that's how, that's how it began. And I didn't have any outline. I didn't have any thought about the ending. I just let it flow, like telling a story and making it up as you go along. And that's how it, that's how it got there. And, uh, uh, very, most of it was just all the things kind of scrambled in my head that had to do with what's going on uh, among us all and uh, where's it going to take us. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I was an art director in New York and Computer technology was just beginning to happen. Um, I had a Mac, one of the early 
really met. Uh, we started changing in terms of filming commercials from celluloid and big giant cameras to smaller cameras that were digital. And we ended up editing everything digitally. And the old way of using a moviola and splicing celluloid, that was gone. So we were entering in the commercial world the technical age. And that's kind of how the whole thing started. Wow. And it's the book, Tim, it's also in audiobook format. And not only that, you, you also narrate it for, in the audiobook form. Is that correct? Yeah, that's uh, my first uh, audition. Um, <laughs> I was asked by Audible, they, well, they asked me if I would uh, you know, read the book. They like authors reading their book. Mm-hmm. because uh, it, authors kind of have a, a, a thought about what they've written. It's not just reading the words, but they are inside the words. And I volunteered to do that. Oh, my God, what a monstrous job. <laughs> and uh, I, Anyway, so I did do that, and it, it was really not for Audible that I did, I did it for Blackstone, who's the publisher, and uh, Audible uh, has the book exclusively, and I until I think the end of April or somewhere around then, and then it's available. I think April first, and I think it's available April first everywhere. That's what I've been told. Okay. What was the most uh, challenging part, writing the book? And then my next question is part of this question. What's the most challenging part, uh, narrating the book? Well, I think that the most challenging part, narrating the book, is having to listen to yourself and hearing yourself speak and being overly critical of every word, nuance, vowel, consonant, and timing, and uh, that's a difficult thing. Also, I am a horrible reader. I'm extremely dyslexic, as a lot of creative people, I think, are. And and I, I can't read flowing the words out of my mouth into a story. So I had to chop and dice a lot of pauses and uh, re-reads together to make it come together to make it come together rather smoothly that's a difficult thing um and uh you know i'm hoping that uh it sounds good i mean i've heard people tell me yeah it sounds good you know so i'm not too worried about that right now yeah i've heard a sample of it on youtube and it sounds very interesting i i have to check it out more you know so it sounds very interesting it's it's a story that as it evolved this stream of consciousness uh, things came to mind the technology in concert with nature in concert with humanity and and what what i found the book leading to was our dependency on our ingenuity. We are so ingenious. We can make anything. And we do. And now we make everything from uh, an Alexa that uh, can think for us, basically, Mm -hmm. to all of the uh, technologies that have become at this point, a crutch more than a tool. I think things started out as a tool, but we became so dependent on it, now it's a crutch. And I think that that uh, concerned me. And as that concerned me, it started to take what I expressed in the book. I mean, if you are uh, uh, dependent on things and those things evaporate in a sense, Uh, That's a serious problem. And uh, the dependency is where I feel we have uh, our Achilles heel, in a sense. Mm -hmm. And part of the 
journey of the timeline that I mentioned earlier is this meteor that's created after the Big Bang that is made of monopoles. And a monopole is a single pole subatomic particle. And in my story, I need to create this thing that's traveling from an explosion through space and time. And it's highly magnetic. And its magnetism eventually, billions of years up the timeline, ends up degaussing every bit of data on the planet. And uh, what we need to do to get back to stability or not continues in the story. Now, as far as the cockroach goes, because I haven't mentioned uh, Tem much, Tem is a journey unto itself. He is a creature that's not dependent on anything. He is everything within himself. And the journey through time that Tem takes is one that uh, is a series of stories about Tem that are peppered through the timeline as it moves towards the present and eventually far into the future. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting because, like you mentioned, you know, people these days uh, are so dependent on technology and, you know, what if one day it just all blacks out, you know, what if it all just shuts down, you know, then what would people do, you know? Yes, and and I think that um, what was going in my head back then, I originally wrote this book in the early 80s. Oh, wow. And it sat around, and some people had read my little drafts and things, and uh, and I, I, I was concerned about these things back then, because what happens when we, you know, when we rely on, you know, all this stuff and, uh, and putting it together and, and, and expressing those thoughts. And today, it's only become more and more uh, current and meaningful. So uh, I decided to, uh, through a friend of mine, uh, Joe Bev, who you know, mm-hmm. uh, he's read, he read it and he said, Chuck, you've got to do an audio book of this. And uh, so I worked with him, and we put it together, and that's how it all got started, and here we are. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, is it just an audiobook form, or can you can people get it in paperback, hard copy, or is it just strictly audio audiobook? We're we're actually doing a Kindle type book right now. And it's almost done. Um, I don't know if I'll do a, a, a paperback on it or a book on it. It's so carbon intensive, you know. It's so much to do a, a real book um, in paper, especially with all this technology that's now a crutch instead of a tool, allowing us to see it on our on our technology. So uh, I'm kind of a contradiction to myself, I guess, but uh, maybe it'll be a paperback again, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, as long as it's out there, you know, so audiobook form is good, so people can li- listen to it, as long as it's as it's out there, so <laughs> we're good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My uh, name, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I think that, that this cockroach, I, I want to explain a little about him. Okay. He is interdirected. That means everything he's ever experienced, he contains within. This is my cockroach, not the real cockroaches out there. So because he's interdirected, his experiences are inside him from 320 million years ago. And as he moves through time, he passes a conscious genetic memory genetically to his offspring. So besides-